Good morning, everyone. Hi, Cutter. What are you doing? Silly dog. Anyway, uh, we've been doing some little projects around here that I haven't videoed, so I just wanted to give you a little catch up on what we've done. Well, you know we've had a water problem with the water, when it rains. We had a big uh, puddle here in front of the lean-to all the time. We dug a trench, ran our eaves trough into a tile, ran a trench all the way down. Just goes down all the way into the bush over there. And that is our generator box that we used to have the generator in, in the, in the lean-to. We did move this pile of wood that was here. And that gave us the extra room we needed to get the, the back hole in there. And we took the generator out of its box and we just have it sitting here up on blocks so it's easier to get to. When we built the lean-to, we did um, do it 12 feet because the boat and the machine fit perfectly in 12 feet with a little bit of extra space, which is what we wanted. So when we tried to get the machines in here, uh, it didn't fit because of this pile of wood was sticking out six inches. So we only had 11 and a half feet instead of 12. So by getting rid of that pile of wood, we were able to get the machine all the way in. And our skylights that we put in here do a fantastic job of lighting this place up. It's pretty amazing. That is a job we do not regret at all. Watch out, Cutter. And here is Jeff's new snowblower. Jeff's new snowblower, not a new snowblower. It needs a little bit of work. We got a great deal on it, of course. So it needs a little bit of work. Everything works. It just, it's got a couple of rust holes in it need to be fixed. And um, it's all hooked up and ready to go for our first snowfall. Oh, another little project that I got done. Put up this flashing on the roof of the lean-to between the transition. So that rain, snow, just comes down here instead of backing up and getting up underneath the eaves of the shed of the the eaves of the shop so we're gonna get the fascia put on here at some point and uh, that should uh, keep everything well protected put the drip cover up on the up above the door because we we're getting rain coming into the shop. It would run down the wall and come down inside the shop. So we put the drip cover on. So we didn't notice it before, but once we had the drip cover put on, um, or the track cover, whichever you want to call it, it's the same thing. Um, we noticed the door is not hanging straight. You can see at the top here that there's less of a gap over here and less of a gap over here. So we're going to have to try to figure out how we're going to readjust our door because it's not straight. Hmm. What cutter? What do you got? Is that your soccer ball? Oh, you're goofy. So once the tent blew down, the yellow tent, we put everything in here. I made good use of those shelves we put up. Everything is up there. There's some up here. This is my project wood for uh, crafting and stuff like that. I'm going to build all kinds of wood projects because I love woodworking. But yeah, you can never have too much storage. And I built this awesome toy box for my grandson, Carter. Christmas present. Want to go for a walk? Come on, let's go for a walk.
because it's hunting season, every time I take the dog out for a walk on the trails here, I need to wear my orange and my orange, just so I don't get shot. Not that I will, but you never know. Uh, down on the trail, uh, we ended up um, making the trail wider so we can get the sled in here in the winter time because we can't walk if there's any amount of snow out here. So we just took the chainsaw and we just started cutting and we made this trail wide enough so that we can get the, snow, the, the ranger and the snowmobile through here. So it's hunt week and uh, we got a doe. That's all we've seen, so that's all we have. And it, we got this doe. Dude, what's that? Tuesday? Tuesday? It's now Friday. Was out this morning, didn't see anything. Haven't seen anything since. So today is going to be 11 degrees, so we're processing this doe. These are, we've got the front quarters done. Cleaning it up, taking off all this fat because yep. venison fat is not good. <laughs> it's really waxy. So it looks pretty good, but we'll just try to make sure that we got good, clean venison. Well, this will keep us in meat for quite a while. He's got the bone. He's trying to find. Oh. <laughs> I gave the dog the one of the shank bones, and uh, he's trying to find a place to hide it in the shop. We gave him one already. He wanted to go right outside, so it's buried out there somewhere. Cutter, what are you doing? He has tried to put it underneath that pail. Yes. <laughs> you just chew it. Yeah, why don't you just chew it? Here's something for you. You see. gotta drop your bone. Here you go. Oh, he's going to bury it in the wood box now. <laughs> Look at him. Instinct is strong in that dog. Did you put your bone in there? He has buried the bone in the wood box. Okay, is that good, Tucker? Is it well buried? <laughs> You goofball. Okay, sawdust in your nose. There. It's not pretty, but it works. Jeff is working on getting out the back strap now. Getting off the extra fat. Extra fat. She's got a good all. three quarters of an inch of fat on her back here. Maybe I'm not doing it right, but that's the way <laughs> I'm doing it. As long as it comes off and it tastes good. Yeah, we're definitely not wasting meat. Hopefully it's better than our tenderloin we cut out. Oh yeah, our tenderloin. Tough as nails. One of those odd He screwed things. up, I think. Like. Well, for what our research said, yeah, yeah. we messed up. 
we should have left it. Normally we get tenderloin out and it's delicious, melt in your mouth. And <laughs> we're trying to figure out, we took it out and then ate it that night, right? Was that night? Yeah, the same night we yeah. got the deer. So, and then we're trying to figure out why is this tough? As like, well? and it wasn't just a little tough. It was no, like, it was, like you it was chew oh, it. you couldn't chew it. It was terrible. The flavor was good. But yeah. <laughs> so then we got on the chew. old internet and it's like, and then it clicked to me. The one said um, that it was, it gets tough like that after you shoot it, shoot it, and we know it does, right? We've already got to, <laughs> done it multiple times, but then I started thinking, it's like, no, we usually let that them deer and yeah, do it on butcher never, day. So a lot never, of times they've sat yeah. for minimum three days. Yeah, we've to never a week. cut them out the same day ever. So we figure that's the issue. We're certainly hoping so because if the rest of the deer is like that, it's like, whoa. Well, it seems to be cutting all right, so. Oh yeah, like this is coming off the bone like it's. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it is. This is the dirty part of eating meat, I guess. Yeah, and we would, rather, we would rather do it ourselves. We used to take it to a butcher when we had like when Jeff hunted with the group and there was like 13 or 14 deer, but it was very expensive. So Jeff just decided one day, hey, what if we tried butchering it ourselves? Deer is processed. We have shank for asobuco and maybe some stewing or for some uh, soup bones. We have two neck roasts. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, nine off the hind legs. Uh, eight back strap roasts, which are gonna be fantastic. Four shoulder roasts. Uh, we've got a bunch of rib bones that we cut up for the dog. We'll cook those and then he can eat those. And uh, pale, no. <laughs> and a bowl of stewing beef. So that should last us for quite a while.